Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I figured I'd start today by showing you my tablescape and how I decorate it using all of the spell books I've made and potion bottles I've made. So the whole tablescape is pretty much DIY. But this first one, spell book, I am gonna link the two spells I use. I feel like it's pretty common all over Pinterest and YouTube, but I'll link it down in the description box if you wanna print them out. And then there's one of my potion bottles I've made, and that is the, one of the new books you'll see in this video. And here's one I've made in the past. It's hexes and spells, and I just have a bat on there. And on the side, I just have a centipede and like a skull and bones on the top and bottom. I loved how that one turned out. And on the underneath everything, I'm just using the creepy cloth from Dollar Tree. And then here again are some of the potion bottles I've made. If you're interested, uh, let me know. I can do a video on a couple of those, making some new ones. And this, that is one of the new spell books you'll see. And then this spell book is actually the very first one I ever tried making like five or six years ago. That is with paper towel. And I do not like using paper towel. I've tried wetting it and all different things, but I always use tissue paper. And then here is the back of the big open book that I started out with. And if I have an open book, I try to put smaller things in front of it. So if someone on that side of the table is sitting, they are able to see that view. Then I have some more potion bottles. And then that is also a DIY with like the moss from Dollar Tree and the mummies. And this is another spell book I've made previously. That spider web is using hot glue. So I actually did the hot glue spider web first, then did the Mod Podge and tissue paper over it. And the skull you will see today. And then over here, I just have a few more potion bottles. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I love this setup and it's neat that everything is DIY, <laughs> it has a little bit of a story. So I hope you guys enjoy today's spell books. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you guys for watching. First book I'm going to start is the Light Up Skull book. And this was pretty easy to do, but I'm gonna start off with one of the skulls and I'm gonna cut it in half. The top and the bottom of the skull are a little bit harder than the sides. So I would start on the side and then work your way down and around but overall it was pretty easy and then once i have that cut in half i'm going to take a screwdriver and pop a hole through each eye and then i'm taking that knife and i'm just kind of trying to widen the opening a little bit and then i'm going to place him in the middle of the book with the tea light and then once i have the tea light where i want it i'm just going to take a box cutter and in small sections just keep going around and around pressing into the book and once I can tell where the indention is, I move the tea light and I just work on it this way. I do not have to end up going through the whole hard book cover. Eventually it just popped out nicely for me. Now I'm taking the tea light and I'm just making sure that I can get to the on off switch in the place where you can change the battery out. Then I'm gonna take the E6000 glue and I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm also gonna take the hot glue and go around the candle as well. Now I'm going to take the skull and I'm just going to use the hot glue to place him on there and the top and the bottom had flat surfaces. So I'm going to put the glue there first and then I'm going to go around the skull with the gun. There will be a few open places but I'll cover those up with the tissue paper once I get to that point. Now I'm gonna take the Mod Podge and one of the foam brushes, and I'm gonna be going over this with tissue paper. And this is the same process that I will use throughout the three books. So I'm gonna take the Mod Podge and put it on pretty heavily. And then this one I am gonna to have to do in small sections, but I'm taking the tissue paper and wadding it up really tightly to make wrinkles. And I'm also coming up a little bit on the skull with the tissue paper. So I don't want to take a chance of the light coming through. Plus there were places that didn't sit evenly with the book. So that will help cover it up. And I want it to look like he's coming out of the book as well. And then once I have that on, I'm just going back in with the Mod Podge over the tissue paper. And then I will do this throughout the whole book. And I will do the front and the sides first, and then I'll let that dry and I'll flip it over and do the back. And I am going to do a little bit on the inside. So looking at all directions, it will look the same as the front. And then I do cut the corners a little bit to help when I fold it over. 
in the same process, Mod Podge, then the tissue paper, and then the Mod Podge again. So I'll do this all over the front, and then once I get to the back, it is a little bit easier because I'm not working around the skull, so you can use a bigger piece of the tissue paper and do it all at once. And then up here, I do this part as well, and I do use my fingers. It might help a little bit, even though it's a little messy, to try and get that over there because I eventually will paint the pages, so I wanted that top frame to match the rest of the book part as well. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> And it's not a big deal if the tissue paper does overlap in some places, just covering it up with the Mod Podge. You can't tell in the end after it's painted and everything. And here's just a quick shot of me doing the back of the book. And I always do the back of my books, whether they're going to be lying flat or standing up. Now going in with some black acrylic paint, I'm just going to go over all of the tissue paper. I'm going in with a bigger brush and then I'm going to take a smaller paintbrush and the tissue paper that I put up coming up against the skull, like you see here, I'm just going to go in and cover that up. If it gets on the skull, it's not a big deal. I feel like everything blends together in the end, so it doesn't matter. And I'm also taking it on the inside where I did the Mod Podge. So everywhere on the inside and right there on the top and the bottom of the book. And while I have this small paintbrush, I am going to go in the eyes where I cut it a little bit. You could kind of see the cream color, so I'm just touching that up. And I am taking just a little bit of paint and just shadowing him a little bit more seemed like he had a lot more shadow on the left side than the right side so i'm just touching this up a little bit then i'm going to go in with this burnt umber acrylic paint honestly it's just a brown color but i'm going to paint all the pages all the way around the book with this now for the outside of the book i am going to use this distress oxide ink pad i think it's in vintage photo and I'm just using my finger, which I know I probably shouldn't do, but I'm always using my finger. And then I'm just going to go in and kind of rub that on all around the book. But you can also use paint for this. You don't have to use the ink pad. And then I am here, you can see using the brown paint that I use for the pages and just really lightly kind of going through and rubbing it around in different directions. And that's all I'm going to do for this. I didn't use any embellishments or words. I wanted to keep him pretty simple. I feel like there's a lot going on with him already. And he lights up, which I do have a little clip of that as well. <laughs> and it's a little bit darker. It's pretty creepy looking. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You'll have to let me know what you think down below. And let's get started on the next one. This one I think turned out really fun and different. So first I have my book and then here are the skeleton hands that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. So it did come two to a pack and I found that just taking a knife and kind of sawing and then it would break off really easily. I did have to have my husband help me hold it down. And then I'm just placing it on the book where I want it and tracing it around. I am going to have to drill this out. So I'm using the 3 8 drill bit on this. And I'm going to have to do two holes in order to make him fit. I did cut it off at the joint, which was bigger. If I made it shorter, it probably wouldn't have had to make such a big hole. So here I am just drilling out the holes. And then I did kind of have to turn it to the side a little bit because I didn't get them right next to each other. So I had a little bit of book in there. And I'm just taking a knife and digging it out. So I'm just drilling it. I'm not drilling it all the way through, just long enough to where when I put it in there, it'll stand by itself. And I am going to rip out a few pages so I can tear it up and use to make it later on down the road to make it look like the hand is coming out of the book. You'll see what I'm talking about. So again here, same process as the first one using the Mod Podge. And this is fairly easy because I'm not really doing too many other embellishments. I'm just making sure to get my finger down in there to the holes open up. Now using these bones from the Dollar Tree, I'm just going to use two and I'm going to put them at the end of the book. And then the letters, I'm going to be using these from Hobby Lobby. I did find these at Dollar Tree. I have a couple of packs I picked up. But this one, I wanted the words on the front of the book, so I needed something a little bit bigger. And I do love the font on these. 
And the brand is Paper Studio, so I was able to get these 50% off one week. So I'm just going to go with curses, and I'm going to kind of curve the word. So I'm just placing them down where I want them. And these are stickers. I've never had a problem with any of the letters falling off of my other books. Once I get the paint on, they stay really well. Yeah, and I'm just going to be using the hot glue gun to get the bones attached to the side. Now I'm going to take my black acrylic paint and the skeleton hand. I'm going to shade him. And I did this because I thought he was a little too white. I wanted to give him some black shading. I felt like that would look a little bit better. So just like the skull had in the first video, just that shadowing, that's what I'm trying to replicate here. I did try to do it with the rag, but no, I ended up using my finger again. So that's all I'm doing here is just trying to give him some shadowing. And this is what it looks like when I'm done with the shadowing. So now I'm just gonna take the hot glue gun and put him down in that hole to make sure it's secure. So the pages I ripped out earlier, which you really probably just need one page, I am taking just parts of it, but making sure the parts that I did rip out all had words on it, and then I'm just kind of wrinkling and folding it up to put around the bottom of the skeleton hand because I wanted it to look like the hand was coming up out of the book, so I, wanted, I thought it'd be kind of cool to see the book pages. And I'm just using the hot glue gun to get them on there and I'm making sure all the holes are covered up and everything looks like it's attached. And now I'm just going in with the black paint like the first book and I'm going to paint over the whole thing. And then when I get to the letters, I am kind of pressing and making sure I get all around the letters, the paint. And then same with the bones, just making sure I get in between all the creases and covered everything up. I did not paint the pages as you can see there. So I am going to go in with my black and my gray paint. And first I'm gonna start with the pages. So I'm trying to touch up on the sides there where I didn't get the black all the way on the inside. Then I'm gonna go in with the gray for the pages, but I'm also gonna be picking up some of that black, which is already coming off a little bit on that sides where I painted, which is fine, because I'm gonna mix them together and kind of run the black through the gray to kind of make it look a little dirty or give it that kind of effect. And I'm gonna do that around all the pages of the book. And just a little close up of trying to blend some of that black in with the gray. Right now I'm gonna be taking the chains from the planter and I'm going to be kind of chaining the book and I'm just using the hot glue gun and that I'm just putting on the top bottom corner and it fit in there nicely. And then I'm just taking it across the top, which this length actually ended up working out great. But the little hook piece that comes on it, I did take that off. So you could just see the chains and I'm just gonna glue that down. So that's all, I'm gonna end up using three chains. So this one across the middle, and then I do add another one across the other angle, which you don't see here. But this one, it was a little bit long. I didn't want it to go all the way around the book in case I had it setting on a wood table or anything. So I cut it down and then just glued that piece of chain on the back. And then this is the rub and buff in silver, and I'm just going over all the raised parts and the words here, the curses. I'm making sure to go over that in the silver. And guys, you can do this with paint as well. And you can use a paintbrush or your finger, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going over all the bones, and I am going over the chains with the silver. And then here I do grab the gray paint and I like to go in with different colors on the background as well lightly and kind of just fluffing it around to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. And I'm also taking that gray over those book pages and putting a little bit of gray along those also. I wanted them, I thought they looked kind of too pristine and white so I was trying to give them a more dirty look. But I do love how this book turned out. I feel like it's a little bit different take on all the spell books so with the hand coming out <laughs> trying to get out of the book so i hope you guys like this one and let's get on to the next hey this one i love i think it's my favorite one so this is the open spell book and i'm going to be using embellishments on this these letters i did get at the dollar tree and i love them they're small and the font is a lot different instead of using the felt letters 
So in this trick or treat, it's actually in a coaster. It came in like a six or an eight pack. And I'm gonna be using one of the skulls and then that spider came off one of the big cobwebs that they have there. In the skull, I'm just cutting in half so I can fit him on that coaster. And then the spider was just a tad big. So I'm just going through and cutting off his legs. Then I'm just gonna take the hot glue gun and glue everything down where I want it. I am not going to glue, or I'm sorry, stick the letters on the spine just yet. I don't wanna Mod Podge those because they're smaller and I wanna make sure I can read them. So same process, just a lot of Mod Podge. And then on this, I do try to start on the outside and making sure I'm pulling as I go and I have enough tissue paper to cover up all the embellishments that are raised. And then just taking that foam brush carefully and going up against all the embellishments. Once that dried, I am going to go in with the stickers now. So I'm gonna just spell out spell book. And then the other sticker pad I found from the Dollar Tree, I, I'm just gonna make a little designs. I don't know, it's all completely up to you. I end up going on both sides with the little circles. And then those other ones are like little teardrops. So again, personal preference, but this is what I ended up with it. And I usually don't like to Mod Podge the smaller things because I feel like they can get lost easily. Okay, here guys, just the black paint all over the book again. Okay, and here are all the paint colors I'm gonna be using on the book. And I'm also gonna be using again, the Rub and Buff. So I started off with that first, the Rub and Buff, and then I'm going to go over all the raised parts and go over all the small stickers that I have on there and the words. And then once I have that done, I am going to go in with the different paint colors I've chosen and just taking a small fluffy brush, just going through, as you can see there, and feathering in the colors and the grays and the oranges and browns, just to give it a more lived, kind of dirty look, if that makes sense. And Henry did step in paint and onto the book. So here I'm fixing that. Okay, for the spells, I am gonna walk you through just in case how I printed them and but the link will take you here so you're gonna hit on the blue link and it's gonna take you to her page and if you scroll down and these are free yeah the two that are side by side I hit the upper right hand corner to print and then I'm gonna hit my printer button there I am doing this on my MacBook and then here I'm going to go up to the print again Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. It's taking so long. Okay, here we go. So here's where you want to go to more settings. You want to, the paper size, you want it to be letter. And then if you go down to the scale, turn that on to custom and 110%. And that is how I got it to print on the, this size and it would fit my book. All right, so I'm gonna cut them out and then I'm gonna take each spell and I'm going to rip up each side of it. Now I'm going to go through it and crinkle it just a little bit, not as much as what I did to the tissue paper. And then where the pages I'm gonna set them down on, I am kind of wrinkling the edges a little bit and tearing them up. And I'm gonna go in with the Mod Podge to get the spell on there. And then when I have that on there, I'm gonna go back in with the Mod Podge and go over the edges. And once both of the spells are on there, I'm gonna Mod Podge all the pages, but first I'm taking the corners and I'm kind of pulling them up. I'm trying to give them that curled up look. And then here you can see I'm going over the pages and on the corners, I'm gonna take my foam brush and kind of do an upwards motion and kind of flip through the pages as I go. And there is a little close up after it's dried. Now I'm gonna go in with a Distress ink pad again and a foam brush. And you can also do the coffee and tea trick with this and let it soak. I just didn't wanna go through all that and I already have all the paint out. And again, guys, you don't have to use the ink pad. Here I got out the paints and I'm gonna just use a brush so you can see you don't have to have the pad. And I'm just taking the different colors and going over the edges and the front of both spells and even the pages on the outside of the spell. Okay, now for the outside pages, I went in with this gold. It wasn't what I was thinking, but I went ahead and went with it because I'm gonna end up mixing it with the brown. So I mixed both the gold and the brown, which I actually liked a lot better than the all gold and going throughout all the pages around the book again. 
And up top here, you can see I had some of that black paint and it just didn't look right to me. So I'm just taking a small paintbrush and with black, blending it out into the other pages. So I got the black and then I went in with the brown and gold and blended it. And then if I had any pages up top there that you could see the white, I just went in with the black. And I have to cut off the end of the hands. It has like a little square with a hole and I didn't want you to be able to see that. So I just cut that off with the pliers and using the hot glue gun, I'm gonna glue those down to the front of the book. And you can grab the small easel from the Dollar Tree and I grabbed one of those bones that I used on the previous book and I spray painted both those black. And then I'm just going to attach the bone to the front with the hot glue gun. And I did add a ribbon there. You guys can see, sorry, I didn't get a shot of it, but I just cut a piece of ribbon and I used the hot glue as well to attach it to the top there. So yes, I love how this turned out. I really think it is my favorite. And it was really easy to do. And that's what I love about the spell books. There's just so many possibilities with them. And here is a close up of the back. So I, th I do think it makes a huge difference using the different colors of paint, you know, around your embellishments and trying to give it more depth and dimension. But, and I don't have it on an easel here, but you do need that. That's like balancing. So the easel really does come in handy. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a great one and I will see you next week. Bye guys.